In this video, we'll explore some of the concepts from Atomic Habits and how you can apply them to your fitness and build healthy, long-lasting habits. Now, if you're not familiar with Atomic Habits, it is an absolutely fantastic book written by James Clear on how making small changes can lead to big results. And that the key to success is not in setting big goals, but in building small habits that add up over time. Let's not waste any time and take a look at the first concept, which is habit stacking. Habit stacking is a simple yet powerful technique that can help you build new habits by simply linking them to existing ones. By piggybacking off an existing habit, you're more likely to remember to do your new habit and it becomes easier to form a new positive habit. For example, if you already have a habit of cleaning your teeth every morning, as you should, you can build a new habit of doing two minutes of stretching whilst you are brushing. Repeat this at night and you'll find yourself doing four minutes more of stretching every day that you wouldn't have done otherwise. Over the course of an entire year, that is over 24 hours worth of stretching just done whilst you're already spending the time brushing your teeth. Another example of habit stacking would be to take a quick 10 minute walk around the block once you've finished your evening meal. This habit stack will help you with digestion, get you some fresh air and burn a few extra calories. So it's a win-win. With habit stacking, you're more likely to remember to do your stretching or go for a walk and you'll start to associate the habits together. The power of tiny habits is all about starting small and gradually building up over time. Instead of trying to make big changes to your fitness routine all at once, start with something small that you know you can absolutely stick to and gradually build up from there. So let's say you want to start running. Start off with just a few minutes of jogging followed by a few minutes of walking and gradually increase your time running whilst decreasing the time you spend walking. Over time, you'll be able to build up to longer runs and ultimately see more progress. Another way to apply the power of tiny habits is by focusing on small daily habits that contribute to your overall health and well-being. This could include things like taking the stairs instead of the elevator or doing a quick set of squats or lunges whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil. Over time, these tiny habits that may seem insignificant at the time can actually add up to significant progress towards your goals. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, it'd be great if you could drop it a quick thumbs up as it really does help out a lot. Environment design is all about creating an environment that supports your good habits and makes it easier to stick to them whilst also making it as hard as possible to stick to the bad ones. Your environment can either support or hinder your habits. So it is important to create an environment that makes it easier to stick to those good ones. As an example, if you want to eat healthier, only buy the healthier foods when you go food shopping, leaving the unhealthy ones behind. Not only will you save money this way, but you won't have the temptation of knowing that the unhealthy foods are just sat there in the cupboard waiting to be eaten. This is something I'll admit I'm still working on myself. If you want to exercise more, make sure you have a dedicated space where you know it will take place. This can involve setting up a little bit of a home gym or getting a gym membership to one that may not be quite as good but is closer to home and so you're more likely to actually go. I've set up my training equipment here in the garage where it's always available and ready to go. There is literally no friction when it comes to getting my training done which is exactly what you want when it comes to environment design. Make the good habits so easy to stick to it'd be hard not to do them. The Habit Loop is a framework that can help you understand how habits work and how to create new habits. The loop consists of four parts, which are cue, craving, response, and reward. The cue is the trigger that sets off the habit. The craving is the desire to perform the habit. The response is the habit itself. And the reward is the positive reinforcement that comes from completing the habit. If you want to drink more water throughout the day, you can set a cue to drink water every time you get up from your desk. The craving might be the feeling of first, the response is drinking the water and the reward is the feeling of staying hydrated. Another example for wanting to run more would see a cue of leaving your running shoes next to the front door and getting your kit out ready the night before. The craving could be the runner's high that you can feel when you finish a run. The response is going out for the run itself and the reward is knowing that you've completed a good bit of exercise for the day and burnt a decent amount of calories. By understanding the habit loop, you can create new long lasting habits that stick by focusing on the cue, craving, response, and reward. Tracking your progress is an important part of building and maintaining your fitness habits. By tracking your progress, you can see how far you've come and stay motivated to continue with your positive habits. There are loads of ways you can track your progress, such as using an app like Strava, a habit tracker, or simply keeping a written log on a calendar. Whatever method you choose, make sure you track your progress regularly and also don't forget to celebrate your successes along the way. 
By tracking your progress, you will be able to see the results of your hard work, remain motivated, and make adjustments as needed to continue making progress. In the book, James heavily emphasizes that the key to achieving long-term success is not to set goals, but rather to focus on building systems that support positive habits instead. When it comes to applying this concept to fitness, you should consider shifting your focus away from the outcome you want, such as wanting to lose a certain amount of weight by a particular date, and instead focus on the daily habits that will help you achieve the outcome that you want. One way you can apply this would be to create a daily or weekly workout routine that you know you can stick to consistently. Rather than setting your goal to lose weight, focus instead on building a habit of training more regularly. This might mean scheduling workouts into your calendar or finding someone who can help hold you accountable. As a result, you'll hopefully see yourself losing weight anyway just as a byproduct of sticking to your positive habits. Now, it is important to remember that building a system is not about perfection. It's about creating a sustainable routine that you can stick to over the long term. This means that it's okay to have setbacks or miss the odd workout. The key is to keep going and continue to build on the positive habits you have established. Essentially, this approach to forming positive habits focuses on changing your belief around who you are in order to support the adoption of new habits. When you think about applying this to fitness, identity-based habits can help you create a sustainable routine that becomes part of your daily identity. A way of applying this concept is to start by thinking about and defining the kind of person you want to be. For example, you might want to be someone that prioritizes their health and fitness or someone who enjoys running regularly. By defining this vision of yourself, you can begin to shift your identity in that direction. Next, you can start to adopt small habits that reinforce this new identity. So let's say you start out by going for a short 10 minute jog three days a week. As you begin to see yourself as a runner instead of someone who just goes out for the odd run, you can start to run for longer or head out more regularly. Another way to help apply these identity based habits is to find ways to make exercise a part of your daily routine. This might look like joining a gym that is on your way to work or by scheduling your workout in your calendar at the same time each day. Making fitness a part of your daily routine helps to reinforce the idea you are someone who exercises regularly. Now it is important to remember that changing your identity takes time and effort on your part. It's not something that happens overnight. You may need to experiment with different approaches to your fitness before you find what works best for you. The key takeaway is to stay committed to your new identity and to keep making small steps towards what you want to achieve. All right, so there you have seven of the key concepts from Atomic Habits and some suggestions on how to apply them to your fitness. If you haven't yet read the book, I would really highly recommend it. It's fantastic and genuinely one of the best books I've ever read. And whilst on the topic of habits, you should next watch this video here where I offer seven tips that I've picked up over the years for building the habit of getting up early and training first thing in the morning. Thank you so much for watching this one and I hope to see you again in the next one.